Hey, good morning. It is Tuesday, August 11th. Uh, welcome to Pastors and Pups. I'm Bill Chu. And I'm Pastor Julie Grable. We're glad to have you with us. Yes, we are glad to have you with us. I don't know if there were many comments today because I forgot to look at them. Yeah, I'm not. Sue commented this good discussion. Oh, okay. And good discussion. Thanks, that Sue. That was the only one that popped through my email. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. So. All right. Well, but remember, uh, if you have, if you want to get have your say, just uh, type them in the comments, and we'll, we'll read them. Um, we'll read them on the next day and uh, engage uh, either a question or just a comment that you have that you want to share with the group. Yeah, we so, love to have your feedback. So yeah. uh, we all learn from each other. We do learn from each other. All right. So to, um, today we're continuing our devotions on Sabbath. Um, and throughout this week, we're looking at things that we need to prioritize during that Sabbath time so that we're truly taking the kind of Sabbath rest that God calls us to. So we haven't really come up with a list of to do's for everyone to do, but just a reframe. Just live one day a week differently, and maybe you just need to prioritize a little bit differently and uh, enjoy. Yep. So yesterday we looked at prioritizing God over self. Today we're going to look at prioritizing relationship over responsibility relationship over responsibility yeah. this is going to be a good one for me all right so the scripture um, is matthew 22 verses 33 through 40. now when the crowd heard this they were astonished at his teaching when the pharisees heard that jesus had left the sadducees speechless they met together one of them a legal expert tested him teacher what is the greatest commandment in the law he replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your being and all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You must love your neighbor as you love yourself. All the law and the prophets depend on these two commands. Right. So there were like 613 laws in the Jewish faith at the time. Right. So the... Um, Pharisees and, and, and the Sadducees are trying to sort of trap Jesus by getting him to, you know, say which of the one, you know, commandment is the most important. Yeah. And what he says is the greatest commandment is to love God and to love your neighbor. Yeah, I mean, is that really, it's not really overtly in any, you know, either of those two are not really one of the ten. <laughs> no, but it's part of the Shema. Oh yeah, it is the Shema. That's it. That's the Shema, right? The, he right. does quote the Shema there. But is that part of the? That wasn't one of the ones six, the six hundred thirteen, though. No, but I mean, it would have been something they were very familiar with that they would have prayed on a daily basis. Ah, yeah. So it's like not. Uh, so he goes to your the prayers that you know that you declare that you lift up to God as a rule rather than you know all the you, you see you get what i mean like instead of referring so for us we have this book of discipline which i don't think is really the equivalent of the 613 but um but i think we wave it around sometimes like that right. so then you, you know when you're asking it would be the same i wonder if it would have been the same as asking jesus you know, how do you feel about this paragraph regarding um, truth telling in the churches about you know financial truth telling and you know suggestions for what you might want to do? Uh, famously, in our conference, we've been calling that paragraph two thirteen, but um, it's a, it's where local churches just do some like close examination of their finances and their opportunity for ministry and uh, you know ask the district superintendent for help you know in terms of how should we arrange our mission mm -hmm. um so that's a uh, paragraph 213 work also you know, sort of uh, church assessment is another way of referring to it but but then or or uh you know how do you feel about the celibacy and singleness jesus you know is that it, it, which of these is most important and then he would go uh you know well, you pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That's the most important, <laughs> you know, instead of, so he's, so anyway, he's immediately drawing them back to their worship life rather than their legal life in, 
church. Yeah. Huh. So, um, so it would have been part of the Shema. I do think, I mean, I feel like, I, and I don't know if I just read this in the light of Jesus, you know, love God, love neighbor. I mean, I kind of think, when I think of the Ten Commandments, uh, you know, you should have no other gods before me, don't take the Lord's name in vain, uh, honor the Sabbath and keep it holy. The first, you know, the first part of it is really ways that you can love God. And then, you know, we get into... Um, Thou shalt not steal, honor your mother and father, uh, you know, don't kill. And those are more like what you do, how you manage with other human beings and people in your neighborhood. And so I guess I feel like there's this bifurcation of the ten, at least. You know, the first ones are for God, yeah. and the second right. ones are for neighbor. For a relationship with one another. Yeah. And so... Uh, but I don't know. I mean, I'm not. I'm not sure that's what Jesus was talking about. You know, you know. I don't know that he was going. Okay, there's the first tablet, and then there's the second tablet, and it's really just you know they're just two laws. You know, and we, we we Christians will preach about that and you know point that out. I don't know if that's what Jesus was talking about. Now that you say that he's referring, you know, he goes to the Shema. Mm -hmm. It's like he doesn't even bother to get trapped in this legal argument or this church canon law you know he he just right i mean i mean right at some point he kind of makes this statement about how he kind of replaces the law right yeah i haven't come to abolish the law but i've come to fulfill the law um and then even john wesley uh wrote a sermon that was called the Lord our law and he was talking about how Christ because he's come to fulfill the law it, he actually becomes the law that's what you're saying yeah he becomes the law right so law is only seen through loving God and loving neighbor so you know the, the law to take Sabbath you know is only seen in that it's going to help you love God and love your neighbor so you know if you're neighbor needs healing on the sabbath right? by all means i mean why why withhold that right right the fast that i call for is mercy and justice and, um, or someone needs to be fed on the sabbath right like there's mm -hmm. some in some ways i don't know so that it's but I don't it, know. I feel like maybe we're undoing our priority, right? Like yeah, you know, that's what that's what I, I'm con yeah I'm wondering about that. So because you know so that might is, seem like responsibility, like we have this responsibility to you know heal the sick and feed the hungry, and so you know do we spend our Sabbath doing all of those responsibilities because that really is Sabbath. I don't know. I think the invitation or Sabbath shouldn't trump doing those things but I mean I think it's well it's, re it's prioritized relationship over responsibilities and I think we can tend to go through our responsibilities without any care to our relationship especially when uh, you know especially you know like in a life of a family or, or even in even in work situations you know you're just going through the motions is what we're talking what I'm talking about there you know I you can't well, you you know maybe, maybe you're having a problem with uh, the chemistry of one of your coworkers. You know, like it's just, they're just not helping with the morale of the team. But you can't really, you should be able to hold them accountable for that morale piece. But you know, but maybe this worker is you know a high performer. You know, they, there's good sales, and you, you know they they haven't done anything necessarily wrong. But they haven't like helped the full team do the best that they be the best that they can be, uh, and they just seem to be looking out for themselves. So they're ticking off their named responsibilities, but yet not uh, building any relationships. Mm -hmm. And I think that you know you still need to approach that person and say, okay, yes, this is not a comment on your performance. You know, it, 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 everything's great there. In fact, you know, it's terrific. 
However, you know, we don't, we're, you know, our work isn't just about one person doing really amazing. Our, our work is about yeah, helping everybody. Helping everybody do do well. And we need to, you know, that's the only way that we do our best is when everybody's doing well. So, uh, you know, I need you to get along with, uh, <laughs> with people. Uh, I guess, you know, in a sense, I'm thinking about my, that Michael Jordan show that we've been watching. You know, he won his first championship and the... the, the you know, they were talking about who should get the ball at the last, you know, in the last, uh, and he said, well, well uh, you know, Pax is, Paxton is hitting the shots. We should get Paxton the ball. And so he basically, you know, did a whole bunch of passing and, and then they won, you know, they won, they were down by five and then they were up by, you know, they won by 30, I think, at the end. But yeah, you know, the idea is what, uh, what the coach had said to Michael Jordan was, you know, I'm proud of you. You won, and you won it the, the you know the right way. You know, like you didn't have to take the shot, the winning shot yourself. You were able to dish it off and get more people involved. Mm -hmm. um, Phil Jackson was the coach. So anyway, that that's a okay sports analogy for those of you who <laughs> like sports. You know, there, there's that for you. Um, but you know, the idea is just you know you should. So for Michael Jordan, he needed to pay attention and be a good teammate and pay attention to the relationship so that he could be at his best, you know, as God's calling him to be, in a sense. And so, uh, yeah, I think that's really what we're talking about. It's not just about ticking off the, your to-do list, but it's about, you know, getting just, you know, maybe I'm thinking about grocery shopping, you know, it's about seeing hockey sticks on sale and going ahead and buying bought hockey sticks even though they weren't on the list you know but that you know you know that me and Sephora like them and it's a treat and you have us in, on mine not just your list on mine you know uh, uh, when you go in the grocery store um, that's that's going that's not necessarily Sabbath but reprioritizing in ways that you know you're not worried about your to-do list on, on all other days you can worry about the to-do list but on the Sabbath day you know think about uh, you know, why do you have a to-do list in the first place? You know, and maybe you have a to-do list so that you can earn money for your family, you know, or maybe you have a to-do list so that, y y you know, you can care for the people yeah. in your life. I mean, for me, I think, uh, you know, I can get pretty wrapped up in work and, um, you know, busy myself so much with work that then I don't have the time to, for, like, the relationships in my life, for you, for the kids. Or I'm so tired that like when in the evening, like I got no energy left. Like yeah. right, like you know the kids, one of the kids come home and something went awful at school that day, and you know by the time I get home from work or a late meeting, you know it might be nine or nine thirty, and they want and need you know me to help them process their horrible day. And I'm just exhausted, right? Like, yeah, I think that's true, especially in light of the fact that our job, jobs are really uh, like high emotional energy you're required. And then, you know, you're really just, your emotional energy is just drained by the time you get home. And yeah. it's hard to muster that up. I just think, you know, I mean, I think the trap that I, you know, I schedule everything out, right? Like, so in my mind, I have time to do all these things. Mm -hmm. um, but if anything arises that isn't in that schedule, I haven't left any time for that, right? And then I'm stuck, right? Like, you know, I need to leave that time so that I can engage in relationship better. Um, just, I mean, even when things don't go, go wrong, it's easy to get sort of sucked into your work and not leave time to appropriately attend to your relationships. But um, you know, even even when you are trying to attend to those relationships and you've scheduled, like, you know, I think some people take up the schedule to, like, well, I'm just going to schedule time in for all these people. But relationship doesn't always work that way, yeah. right? Okay, well, I know that you need to talk to me about what's going on in your life right now, yeah, but, but you're on the minutes. schedule yeah. two days from now at noon. We're going to have lunch. And we or even if you're that, only right? saying, listen, I got 15 minutes I can give you right now. Hurry up and go. You know, and you can't really, 
when you're put on the spot, you can't, it's hard to open your heart in 15 minutes, you know, or especially feel like you have to do that in yeah. 15 minutes. And so, right, you kind of just have to give, and this is, this is like the rationale for having a whole day of Sabbath, taking a whole day of Sabbath, because mm -hmm. it takes time to get to the, what you really need to get yeah. to. I think there's always things that, this is the like, I don't know, I mean, maybe I roll over minutes on this too, like, uh -huh. you know, there's like things that I would like to do, like, you know, maybe a, a, a friend has had surgery or something, and in my mind, it would be really nice to, you know, cook them a meal, some soup or whatever, and bring it over. Um, but I've not left any time in my schedule to be able to do those kind of things, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I think, well, someday when I'm retired, yep, right. I will I will be the person who does all those things. Right, like, I don't, if I'm not prioritizing time in my life, allotting time in my life now to be able to do those things, what are the chances that I'm going to be allotting time in my life to do those things so it when I'm retired? And I think it doesn't mean necessarily that you don't do anything for anybody in that. No, or, or I mean, not, but or or I mean, you don't do anything. Is is there doesn't need to be? I mean, it had a prohibition on collecting food. You know, the Israelites uh, on Sunday. I mean, I actually think that it's a good idea to cook on Sunday as long as you're cooking together. You know, and uh, and so. I feel like this is a commentary. Sunday has been known, it's become known in our household as fend for yourself Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> I don't cook dinner on Sunday. Everybody, there's leftovers for the rest of the week, or there's a frozen pizza in the refrigerator, but y'all can fend for yourself on well, I Sunday. I think we do. Well, okay. I, that, that's for dinner, though. I mean, we try to do some lunch together right after church, and, uh, you know, and so people have eaten, and, you know, it's not, and then... We enjoy one. Another. We've been, all, you know, we've enjoyed each other's company, and we're, we're not going to make a dinner t that night. You know, it's, and if well, well, sometimes you do well, if you're hungry. You know, like it's the kids have to cook on their own. You know, is the, is the issue. But uh, I, you know, Uncle Dan used to do. Well, I think he still does. You know, he goes to church on Sunday and in the morning, and then uh, you know, right after church, he takes people to go shopping with him. And he invites people, like it used to be just us, the kids, you know, that were there. Uh, but, you know, now that the kids are kind of out, I think he just invites friends over and um, for, to watch, like, football or golf or whatever. And, they, you know, so he, um, they go shopping first and they pick out their favorite soup or the soup that they want to eat, you know. And then he'll, then Daniel, he likes to have just condensed soup, just an easy, you know, the idea is this is going to be an easy lunch. Mm -hmm. He makes some sandwiches and some soup, and then he enjoys the company. And he does that just on purpose to, to not to spend hours in the kitchen, but to get at you know yeah, hanging out, connecting with people. Yeah, putting so, relationship first. John yeah, Bay, putting relationship said. first. Even though he really does love to cook, I mean, he's, he's crazy in the kitchen. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I think this is a challenging one. Sure. Um, I don't know, because relationship is important to me. So it's always a struggle to to get this balance between attending to your responsibilities and attending to your relationships. Right. right. And it, yeah, so I, I think it, 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 the priority of relationships over responsibilities is not necessary to shun your responsibilities, but to, you know, attend to those responsibilities with an eye on relationship and so you know definitely you want to be doing something with someone not just doing stuff on your own you know uh, mm -hmm. and certainly you want to like doing be doing something for someone with someone or for someone in a way that uh, you know engenders that trust and helps them know God's glory and your presence with them and um, <laughs> we're being called. <laughs> Speaking of attending to relationships, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we need to pray now so I we think, can go I attend to a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let us pray. Um, gracious God, we love you with all of our hearts and minds and being. 
Strengthen us to exercise our love for you with our neighbors so that our time with them may be time with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We wish you luck. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> Spend some time today prioritizing your relationship. Yeah, and these are. I think that's it. Just like those little goals of maybe just, you know, waking up in the morning and saying, you know, what's one person who I can connect with today? And again, these are all for the Sabbath day, you know, so the one day that you're trying to take. Yeah. yeah and, you know, you're practicing these and, you know, you're taking a whole day to practice this reprioritization for your recreation. And, uh, and eventually they'll spill out into the rest of the days. But if you haven't figured that out yet, don't don't get too worked up about it yet. You know, just try to do it for one day a week, you know, to reprioritize. Cool. So we hope you have a good day, and I will see you tomorrow morning. And God bless.